Morning all. Um, my little Scrambles Cub replica is there for a reason. I'm going to come round and uh, talk about uh, needle jets and fuel. Now, um, I had a great day out on this bike yesterday and it has been running a treat lately. And um, this and a few other bikes that I've uh, worked on in recent times and over the years have got one thing in common. And um, that is they've basically got the factory settings right through uh, you know ignition timing main jet needle position all that sort of stuff i set as per the manual uh with one exception and that is ooh, a bit drunk there aren't we the uh, carburetor needle jet and i've been finding recently um where in the past along with many others I've sort of suspected that uh, or with uh, modern fuels it might be an idea to knock a couple of degrees off the ignition timing um, after reading a very very good book hang on let's see if I can sort this out or we're gonna feel like we're at sea wobbling around in bad weather there we go that's better steadied that up um, yes uh, there's a book that I've read in recent times very good book and um, it's called Classic Engines Modern Fuel by a guy called Paul Ireland. I have talked about the book before when it arrived. Uh, the sender sent it to me anonymously and I was wondering uh, what the motive was. But I read the book and it is really good. And it actually sort of backs up some of my own theories. Not that I've got any letters after my name. I'm no um, scientist in any way, shape or form. I've just got years and years of... Um, hard and learned experience perhaps but uh, I don't know everything about everything I'm always open to um, reading up on things if I need to and um, basically <clears throat> and be and to, to be fair before I read the book actually I started encountering pinking or if you across the pond pinging um, in certain engines and motorbikes that I've worked on and um, <clears throat> My first port of call used to be, obviously, knock a few degrees off the ignition timing. Maybe go up a size or two on a main jet, you know, little things like that. Um, but it actually all came home to me one day, and this is quite a few years ago, and I think the actual ride itself is probably among my videos on YouTube, and I think there's a playlist dedicated to the bike. Um, a 612cc Royal Enfield sort of bobber low rider style thing called Slowpoke uh, that I worked intensively on a few years ago and um, sure enough with high compression ratio and the 612cc and the way the engine was set up we encountered we encountered the dreaded pinking and um, I tried all sorts with the timing the main jets and all that sort of stuff and I thought I'd fixed it. I remember riding up the road from here towards Pimp Saint, you know, on my part of my 15 mile test route where it's a gradual pull up hill, slightly uphill for mile after mile after mile. And um, the bike ran great. I went up the road about four or five miles, whatever. Thought I was happy with it. Turned around to come home. And on the way, coming back down the very gradual hill where I had to give the machine less throttle, I heard pinking and I thought what's this pinking going downhill the engine's not pulling I'm hardly giving it any throttle and then it dawned on me obviously when they're working harder the throttle is open further you're more likely to be reliant upon and affected by the size of the main jet coming down the hill with less throttle you're on the needle jet so I think that was one of the first occasions perhaps where I actually went up a size on a needle jet. Now in Amel, 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 however you want to call them, carburetor speak, about 90% of the carburetors I've encountered have always had a 106 needle jet in them. And uh, I decided I'd go up to a 107. I put the 107 in slow poke, went up the road, came back down the pinking was gone and ever since then and in quite a few cases I've increased needle jet size rather than main jet size or sometimes maybe both left the ignition timing as I thought it should be and um, I've had great results and the same goes for the scrambles cub replica behind me 
everything on that bike is set as you would expect to find in the manual for a 1962 to 66 uh, sports cub. Everything in that engine and everything about the settings is sports cub. It's a full blown 14 and a half brake horsepower version. Went very well yesterday. The only deviation from standard is it's got a 107 needle jet in there instead of the 106. Um, some of my viewers might remember not so long ago I had a Triumph uh, pre-unit trophy TR6 here which uh, came and went a couple of times actually. Uh, the owner managed to put a hole in one of the pistons on the Black Mountain and it came back for a top end rebuild. It turned out the single carburetor in that had a 106 needle jet in it. It should have had a 106.5 or if you prefer 106.5. I elected to get a 107 and I even actually put a 108 in it to begin with and um, that solved the problem I rebuilt the top end it got up the black mountain with no pinking it certainly didn't hold the piston the ignition timing was left alone as when it hold piston and um, it worked fine I haven't heard anything since and again that one features on video so what the point of this video is is basically if anyone's interested, and this could apply obviously to other makes of carburetor as well, but certainly in the land of Amal, if you uh, have any doubts about your fuel, because modern fuels effectively make an engine run weaker. Now, modern fuel injected engines with ECUs and whatever, they adjust themselves to compensate for the uh, oxygen levels and whatever in the fuel. Like I say, I'm no scientist, but basically, the uh, E10 that we get down the road, although I haven't seen it do any harm physically to anything on my bikes, um, it did introduce an element of pinking to some of them and going up a size or two on a needle jet seems to be the fix. And on a monoblock it's dead easy, you just take the jet holder out, the main jet is down here obviously, it's not that one, okay, I know most of you will know that, it's this one. So you've got to take the jet holder out of the carburetor. There's the needle, by the way. The whole lot fits like that. It's a couple of minutes work to swap one and probably around about 10 quid to buy a needle jet by the time you factor in VAT and the postage to you, unless you happen to sort of be lucky and be at a place that sells them. But uh, they can be surprisingly great value for money and the re results can be out of this world, honestly. And just touching on modern fuels again a little bit, I know I've banged on about how well my bikes start and they've been left for yonks and no problem and whatever. Um, but fuel pipes and so on, perishables, you know, modern fuels um, destroyed my fuel pipes. Modern fuels did this to the uh, rubber tip on the needle and blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, I've got a theory about that as well, actually. Modern rubber, if you use a motorbike with fork gaiters and you buy new fork gaiters and fit them like I did on my BSA A65 Thunderbolt just a couple of years ago. I fitted new fork gaiters to that because they were split and in bits. I think I got about six months before I saw a split in one of the fork gaiters that I bought brand new and fitted. And um, one thing that seems to be overlooked, which I think is a big culprit, is that uh, modern rubber doesn't seem to be what it used to be. And apparently modern rubber is totally different chemically to what rubber was years ago. Now again, I'm no chemist or scientist, but uh, I think that's something that's often overlooked. And in fact, I had a black rubbery pipe, fuel pipe on the A65 Thunderbolt that went on me. Um, it's suddenly, I remember riding it and feeling my inner uh, thigh of my left leg feeling very cold and looked down and it was wet and there was fuel dribbling onto it from a split pipe. So um, let's not overlook things like that that may also be playing a part where we blame modern fuels. But I just wanted to um, highlight the fact that I've not got myself out of trouble, but uh, overcome slight glitches and flat spots and pinking and whatever by going up a size or maybe occasionally two sizes. I have used 108s occasionally, needle jets in the carburetors. I haven't I haven't to touch anything else, I haven't had to bother with the needle height or changing the slide or anything like that. Just going from one size to the next size up 
and it really can be a revelation so I just wanted to share that with everybody if it's any use to anybody great it's certainly uh, done me proud on uh, this little one and a couple other of my own machines as well as various customer machines over the last few years um, why not give it a try if you got any doubts it certainly won't do any harm to go up a size it could only do any harm if you went down and that's what we're not we're not doing that here so Thanks for watching.